We did chest and we did carbs, beginning with the decline, so the lower portion of the pecs that I wanted to target today, and that's what we did on uh, the decline hammer press. If you don't have one of those in your gym though, you can use a standard decline press, either on a Smith machine or on a barbell, dumbbell, whatever, it doesn't matter. So we did the uh, principle of the 10 repetitions to begin with of our first set. Uh, and then came in the DTP Extreme where we replicated the rest periods following the reps on the second set onwards where we did 10 repetitions, rested for 10 seconds and then we did 20 and then on the third set we did 10 uh, repetitions, rested for 10 and then did our 20 reps, rested for 20 and finished with our 30. And that's what we followed through every single exercise following so I'm telling you that so I don't have to repeat myself through all the other exercises. So uh, on the decline, same as when you're doing incline or anything like that, make sure your shoulders are retracted so you don't bring your shoulders into the exercise that allows for assistance from them because we're trying to isolate the pecs. So once we've done that, we moved on to an incline. So we've done a lower portion, now I was really wanting a target underneath the clavicles. We did another hammer uh, machine that was free motion so I really could get a contraction at the top towards the inner pecs. But again, if you don't have this, you can use dumbbells, you know, incline dumbbell press. So we followed the same sort of principle there. In between every set, I was probably resting for about two minutes because of larger muscle group. And I was making sure that I'm sticking the chest out. There's a couple of times where I was reaching failure before the reps, uh, the rep guide, but I rest paused until uh, I got to those reps. So you do the same. If you don't reach them, then rest pause. If you go over, you go past, don't stop, continue until you reach failure and you know to adjust the weights uh, the next time. Once we'd done that, I knew that I'd engorge the upper, middle and lower because the middle portion of the pecs, you'll get a good crossover there and uh, a survival mechanism comes in where they're just trying to get through the exercise um, uh, so they will contract the middle portion of the pecs as well and because I wanted to really target and focus and prioritize the lower pecs today we, we finished on another lower pec movement which is very similar to a cable crossover so I very much doubt you'll have one of these crossover machines in your gym, the one that I was using. So use a cable cross over there to really target the lower pecs as well. Get a good contraction at the bottom. When you come up, make sure your elbows are always pointing up towards the ceiling, not behind you. I see that with so many people when they go heavy or when they reach failure, their elbows drop, the wrists go up. Make sure your elbows are up the whole time to really fire your lower pecs. Once we've done that, chest was completed, so we had to go and work the gastrocnemius of the lower leg of uh, the calf area. So we did the standing calf press, following the same sort of principles, just three sets there, um, you know, hitting the drop sets as well. And uh, because it's a weight stack, it's a little bit easier to adjust there. So we did, we were able to rest properly between those drop sets of replicating the reps uh, with the seconds of rest. And then once we've done that, um, I'm having my post-workout shake now talking to you before hitting the cardio now for 30 minutes. Um, this evening, or when you do your second cardio, this is when you're going to perform your abs on a decline bench, I should say, and you're just going to go uh, five sets just to absolute failure. Just five straight sets to absolute failure. And uh, resting for about 30 to 45 seconds between each set. It's a muscle group that recovers very easy, so you've got to keep engorging the blood into the area and the sarcoplasm, so just keep punching it and punching it, and then perform your second cardio for this evening. But there's no need to take a pre or post workout shake with that. Just take your essential fat burners, you know, with the ingredients such as your L, um, your L carnitine and your green tea. And, uh, you know, make sure that you do take your free form amino acids as well, you know, like your glutamine and your BCAAs, just because we are on a restricted calorie diet now and uh, you know you're gonna feel lethargy setting in like I'm absolutely knackered today I didn't sleep much but I think it's because you know we've just jumped into this doing double cardio sessions restricting the calories with our workouts you're probably gonna feel knackered uh, yourself as well that's just the name of the game there's no way around it so I'm done for today tomorrow is an international rugby game that I cannot wait my father's coming down uh, to watch Wales versus Australia. We've got tickets to that game. 
but I'm still gonna be here first thing in the morning doing my cardio and you've got to come back because I got some tips for you as well. So I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.